this is the prophetic word from the Most High Yah. Yah is prepping many of our ministries for fish, for the harvesting of souls, an increase of the harvesting of souls, but it requires obedience. The Bible says, Behold, I will do a new thing in Isaiah 43 and 19. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Yah wants to make a way for you. Yah wants to make a way for you in your ministry. God wants to open up doors for you. Amen. There are certain untapped territories because we have not utilized certain gifts. We have not utilized what God has given us for his kingdom. God is saying that he wants us to utilize what he's given us for his work. Yah is raising up obedient people, kingdom harvesters for the benefit of his kingdom. Yah's government and hand in his earth is so crucial in this last days. Yah's hand in this earth. If the hand is not in the operation and fully in the operation of Yah, of the Most High Yah, the body is going to be ill-equipped. God is saying that his body is ill-equipped. There are untapped and unprecedented anointings for Yah's amazing purpose. It's for you. There's an unprecedented anointing for God's purpose for you and your life. There's, it will cause a doubling over effect in your life, in your family. Maybe that thing that you have been praying for, maybe you're in a stagnant season because you have not utilized all that God has given you. Amen. And you have to exercise and use the fruit of the spirit and love. Although we do a whole bunch of stuff, but we don't have the love for the body. The first and greatest test, the first and greatest commandment, I'm sorry, is to love the Lord. And it's a test. Yeah, that's right. With all our heart and soul. The second one is like unto it to love our neighbor as ourself. Amen. We're supposed to use whatever we have for the benefit of the body and the kingdom. Amen. If your hand is closed, nothing can't get into it, right? There's joy for the body. Amen. There's joy in the hand of the earth. Every joint supplies something. Find Yah and find your purpose. Amen. Not the purpose of man. Not It's not the status quo. Y'all wants us to use every unique, even, even the unique ministries for very distinct purposes. This is a new era. This is a new season. Amen. There are so many gifts. Some people have a gift of digital. Some people have a gift of computers. Some people have a gift of marketing. Amen. We are in a new gaming era. You can use that for God. You can create new games. Amen. God can give you and bless you with ingenuity. Are you using the gifts and the ideas? Some people just have spontaneous gifts of ideas, ingenuity, innovation. This is a new era. There are unique ministries. There's a set time bomb when God will cause you to be needed. God caused Ruth and Naomi to have to go back to Bethlehem. Amen. We need those new things that are on the inside of you for this new season that we are living in. We need those inventors. We need ingenuity. We need your uniqueness. We need fresh oil today. There are new ideas that God has on his people to combat the strategies of the wicked one. Amen. But what the church can fall into is trying to make everybody be after the usual or everyone else's patterns and everyone else's gifts, the same old norm. But this is a new season. These are new people. It's a new harvest. It's a new day. You are vital. Even the Bible said, oh, sing unto the Lord a new song for he has done marvelous things. Amen. You don't have to be like the usual or everybody else's patterns. You are vital. You are significant. You may not fit the mold. You may not feel and look like everybody else, but you are needed. You are necessary. You're not a mistake. You're not a mishap. Hallelujah. And God said, he told me to tell his people that some of the things that we think are not ministries, they are. They are crucial for this body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are some needs. There are some body needs. You are needed for the body. Some things, if you just do them, you're going to be shocked at what gifts open up for your obedience. Your gift will make room for you. Your gift can even feed you. Your gift can bring you before high kings, high places, high people. Your gift inside of you. It is a ministry. It is necessary. There are untapped and vital ministries of outreach. There are helps, gifts that you think are so insignificant, but they are vital. They are so vital. I remember I was told that there was an apostle, this woman that was actually called to be an apostle, and someone tried to hold her down because someone was envious of her, and they placed her into, oh, I'm just going to throw her in, in the children's ministry uh, to teach Sunday school, teach the children. Oh, but God, he blessed her ingenuity with a play, a play that just reached thousands of people. God has a set time to cause a light to shine on you and the gift that he's placed on the inside of you. He said that you are that light that sits upon the hill. It can't be hid. It cannot be hid. You cannot be hid. You're so vital. Hallelujah. Don't underestimate the gift on the inside of you. Oh, we don't need another of the same old. We don't need another hero. We don't need another. This. There is so many of the same thing. Amen. God wants to shine a light on your uniqueness. We are even in a season that 
God just wants to just take over the program. I was talking to a pastor today and he was receiving the same word that God's been giving me. He said he just going to have a night of praise and worship because God just wants to minister to his people and people aren't getting their breakthroughs. I know that God gave him that word because God been dealing with me with that. I'll be feeling the Holy Spirit trying to move the service one way, but then we have people trying to stick with the normal script. And a lot of times if you don't flow with the spirit of God and go trying to read some announcements to do all these things after that praise and worship, you've been amiss the time, the timing of God. Amen. Don't miss the momentum. The momentum is here. Use what you got for the kingdom. It ain't always the usual. You don't always got to be asked up. God is saying that he will create a will and a way for you to use what you got for the upbuilding of his kingdom. What gift can you offer? Are you sensitive to the spirit in that regard? There's so many uncharted territories, so many untapped ministries of outreach and helps that are so vital. And we've been looking down on ourselves. There are breakfast ministries, soup kitchens. I feed the homeless myself. It brings such a joy. God began to cause an overflow that's been just, you know, people began to act different. God began to just put things in alignment in my life that were not in alignment. When I began to obey the voice of God, use what you have for the kingdom so God can be a blessing in a unique way and a stagnant area in your life. Hallelujah. Renting out your building, God is saying, for a good cause at a reduced rate. Maybe God is causing you to be a blessing to someone or someone else's ministry. Maybe God has put on your heart to do a, a convention, to host a convention, or to allow someone else to, to use your building to be that limelight. But God will turn around and shine a light on you and double over in your own ministry. You may break out with prophecy. Maybe you've been learning about prophecy Maybe you've been trying to learn about this gift that's on the inside of you. Maybe it may be prophecy. Maybe it may not be prophecy. But you want to be used. And God is saying, but you, obedience is better than your sacrifice. Oh, somebody help me in this place. Use what you have for the benefit of God. Maybe God is causing you to help someone with what you have to put on a conference. And you know God's been leading you. Maybe you have a gift of digital or, or marketing of some sort graphic design I don't know maybe you can do a paint job for someone so on and so forth and don't just look for the ones with the high seat amen the ones that you think that should be sitting in a high seat that's dressed all nice and good like a fashion show amen God dwells in the small places who shall be the greatest in the kingdom God has a blessing for you but it's going to come in the unusual place it's going to come in a place of no accolades and no pats on the back Amen. I wasn't the one that was up on Sunday, but I heard the voice of God. Hallelujah. You don't know who you may be talking to. You don't know who you may be dealing with. You don't know who know who. Oh, but God sees you. He got angels recording everything and he's recording everything. Amen. He said this was a test to see what are we going to do with what he gave us. Mm -hmm. It is indeed a test. It is a test to see how you're going to use what God gave you. This is what he spoke to me. There are diverse and unique ministries. I heard retreats. He's caused us to have an area that can be used for a retreat. Amen. A retreat is a quiet or a secluded place. God has caused some of his people to be a host even. Sometimes. I didn't say all the time. But you know that God has placed that on your heart for your pastor or for some minister to be a blessing. Some of us have an overflow of resources that people could benefit. Uh, we have I'm telling you, this is what I heard the Lord say. We might have some type of space, uh, maybe even the mother-in-law suite in the back. God is saying he's caused us to be a blessing to help others in ministry, even to relax, to rest and relax. Now I'm talking about the true people of God, the true ministers of God. Maybe God may be causing you or telling you to use your spot or use your vacation spot. Um, it may even be a condo. It may even be a resort. It may even be a timeshare. I don't know. But uh, when I looked up retreat, it means relaxation, refuge, a hideout, a nest hole for y'all's true leaders. Amen. If you sow into someone else's ministry, God is saying he's going to sow into yours. Rejoice with them that do rejoice. Show yourself friendly if you want to gain a friend. That's what the word says. Some of us have ministries of money even. You can finance kingdom. You have a great career. What's been so difficult for others is easy for you. Amen. And maybe there's something in your life that's stagnant or barren. And maybe God is not going to cause you to get it because you're just like that rich man. And you don't know how to give and sell all you have. Maybe God don't want you to sell all you have like he told a rich man. But God has, has you there to just be a blessing with money. And maybe certain things in your life are not working out because you're not sensitive in the spirit of God. I heard breakfast ministries. 
It ain't always what's established that, oh, because they didn't ask me up. What's within your sphere of your ministry, of your resource? This is what I have to give. Amen. God has caused me to hear his voice and I'm being a blessing. I'm giving my time. Amen. This is indeed a sacrifice. Amen. But I've been doing it and doing it unto God. And God is blessing. He's going to cause an overflow. He wants to cause a double flow. He wants to cause you to double over in various aspects of your life. Uh, hallelujah. If you just humble yourself. I heard work for higher ministries to organize and help others help themselves. Hallelujah. Be a blessing to people. Single mothers. People struggling. I even heard to build housing or renovate. It's more than one type of ministries and soul harvesting. And it does not mean that you are any less important. Hallelujah. I even saw that as people begin to open up and do what God is causing them to do. Amen. It, they'll begin to uh, enjoy one another in the body of Christ, in the hand of the earth. And God will just cause some extra gifts, gifts of healing. You will begin, if you be a blessing to a prophet, you might just start prophesying. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing fellowship and I'm seeing people, you know, where the gifts are just rubbing off. You're just being able to grasp hold onto aspects of people's mantle and God's mantle just by listening. It's in obedience today. It's in the prayer closet today. It's not in the sacrifice of what you want to do. It's not being a hoarder of what you have even. It may not be. Maybe you've studied all day. You've done this. You've done that. You go into conferences. You've done all these things. But did you overlook that thing, that gift that's on the inside of you? It will make room for you. Amen. It's not just a spiritual gift. It can even be your time. It can even be your resource. It can even be whatever God, whatever you have for God. Use it for the glory and a benefit of his kingdom. Hallelujah. Day, diverse ministries allow the uniqueness in you even if you don't see your ministry it's okay even if you don't see everybody doing this and that be a blessing to help people amen i heard hair and skin helps 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 use it use your gifts with the creativity and uniqueness um just use whatever god has inside of you there's a woman that she just uh organizes and obtains money and searches for different things um she gets all this different furniture and things and during christmas time she uh, renovates and does bedrooms for children and makes them so beautiful. There's just so many diverse things. Are you using what God has given you? Some of us, we want to do something, but we just really don't know how or what exactly. Uh, maybe because you don't see what Yah has really placed on the inside of you. Amen. You don't see very many people doing it. What I meant to say was interior decorating. I'm sorry, but renovation is fine because we can use that too. Whatever you have, God is saying, get about my business and use it also for my kingdom. And that's what the Sabbath day is really for. You know, Jesus was doing ministry on the Sabbath. He was healing people on the Sabbath. He, he wasn't sitting down. You can also do stuff for Christ. There's a, a trusting in the Lord to give up an hour. Some of us, we can't take the whole day off because we have certain careers that we can't take off on Sabbath. But the Bible lets us know there are certain scriptures that indicate that we can, you know, choose a day that's more convenient for us to trust God and take that time off for his will and his purpose. It's not always about just the meal. It's also, you can also use it for the servitude of Yah to do whatever God has the idea that he's placed on the inside of you. Now, you don't have to do it on the Sabbath. I'm just recommending. I'm just letting you know that whatever you do for God still, whether it, you, you uh, celebrating or honoring the Sabbath or not, it's still a sacrifice and we have to trust God, you know, because if we're faithful over a few, he will make us rule over many, but just like we take time off on the Sabbath, like I could be working on certain days. I could be working day and night. I used to work so much. Amen. But God began to cut me down and tell me, you know, trust me and do my will and my work. Are we really trusting God? You know, so it takes a great faith, but God honors that faithfulness. He will honor it. You know, so many times we want this, and we want that. But until we do that one thing that God, until we trust God, even takes time off work and to, to close shop for two hours, to bring somebody in our shops, to be a blessing. Amen. To close our bakery for an hour or two to gather up some things for some hungry people to be a light. And I know we got to be sensitive in the spirit because God ain't calling us to go everywhere and go places, you know, without people, there are dangerous places, but just look for a way to be a blessing. There's a safe way that can present itself. Amen. Um, so some of us, you know, we don't really know what to do uh, because we really haven't seen this uniqueness that God has placed on us or we haven't seen very many people, you know, or, and we may think that we are insignificant, but you are not. Amen. Use your creativity and allow Father God to use you and speak to you about the gifts that he wants you to use for kingdom harvesting today. And God is going to cause it to double over. Amen. You're using your gifts to build up the kingdom of Yah. If you're doing that, it's still ministry. If you're doing car repairs, that's still ministry. 
Hallelujah. The Bible said, when I was hungry, you fed me not. You clothed me not. Amen. That was me. When you overlooked those people, that was me. Did you fulfill your purpose? Matthew, the 25th chapter and the 42nd verse. For I was hungry and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty and you didn't give me drink. I was a stranger and you didn't invite me into your home. I was naked and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison. You did not visit me. Then they will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and not help you? And he will answer, I tell you the truth. When you refuse to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you are refusing to help me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. Are you using what God has given you to be a blessing? Or did you overlook the gift that God gave you? Without charity, thou art nothing. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I have become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. There is life in doing the will of God. There is joy in doing the will of God. There's deliverance in doing Yah's will. There's a special anointing even that God has for the body, but it requires more than a partial sacrifice even. Hallelujah. For even if you are in ministry, God is saying no half stepping. 99 just won't do. Hallelujah. He is not hearing the hiding of the sacrifice. He's not hearing the hiding of your arms. He's not hearing the hiding of your gifts. Romans 12 and 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living, that mean every day. And if you're having a problem doing it, then maybe you need to take on the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. When you begin to take on his mind, we begin to operate in his ways. That is the mind in operation, the, the mind of Christ in operation in everyday life. Being a blessing, healing a body. The body is designed to heal itself. But if that hand is ill-equipped, it can't do nothing in the earth. It's, it's bound. Nothing can't get in. There's no growth. Or that's a stagnant growth. Nothing can't get in and nothing can't get out. Nothing ain't getting out and nothing ain't getting in. If you hoard your gifts, how can God give you anything? He blesses a cheerful giver. Present your bodies by the mercies of God as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable, it's your reasonable, so everything you got belong to God. Don't hoard your gifts, people of God. Be a blessing so God can be a blessing unto you. There's an uncharted territory, hallelujah, anointing that's going to fall fresh, but it's going to require obedience to the Lord. Amen. God said, take full accountability of the ministry. He has called us to walk in, even if there are no accolades, even if there are no cheers, even when nobody is looking. Hallelujah. It is the will of Yah that we are doing all of what he's called us to do because souls have to be fed. Ministry, there is other work to do. Amen. There's signs, there's, there's wonders. There's so many different gifts. The power of God can be used in so many different ways. It's still powerful. It's still God is saying all these things that we're overlooking is still ministry and it can be used to birth and be got more ministry on the inside of you. If God has given you an idea to host an outside theater, to play the passion of Christ, just for example, and then give some refreshments, some popcorn or something, God can turn that into a stomping ground. God can cause you to heal somebody. God can cause you to open up your mouth and people fall out, honey. You don't know what God can do. But we want this and we want that. But are we doing all of what God, he's going to cause y'all. Oh, I feel it so heavy. You're going to be a blessing if you obey the voice of God. And I know we got to be so careful uh, with the uh, restrictions, with the virus. But, you know, every area ain't restricted. And even in that, like there's an area in certain churches and they have the six feet apart and people are wearing masks. There's sanitizer everywhere. Amen. We can still do things within the guidelines. I know everybody don't have the resources to do this and that. I'm not, then this word is not for you. This word is for the ones that you know that God has placed this on your heart. And I'm going to tell you this. I even saw people that have money to host retreats for God's leaders, select leaders. I'm talking about true ones. There's some true people out here. Amen. And even it may be some least ones. Amen. But, but you know, the Bible tells us about blessing, you know, his people. Amen. He told us that. The Bible lets us know, don't muzzle the ox that treaded out the corn. A servant is worthy of a hire. Don't hate on them. And you may not be married, but I even see that God wants to bless some people that want spouses. Maybe you don't have a spouse because you didn't host that retreat that God told you in that dream of that vision. Amen. There's going to be some more to this word, but I don't want to keep going on and on. I will continue this at another time. I love you all. Be blessed in the Lord.
You are blessed and highly favored. And God wants to bless you some more. God has some wonderful things. He wants to give you more, 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 more. Amen. But what have you done with that thing? Nothing can get in if he can't get you to release it. Open up your hand. God wants to bless you. He want to put something on the inside of it. Hallelujah. It's going to come. Amen. It's going to come. It's going to come. Rejoice with them that do rejoice. If you be a blessing to a husband and a wife in ministry, or even somebody that you know that are in God, do you know that God could cause you to be a wife or a husband? Maybe your blessing is tied to your obedience. I love you today. Show some love.